Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my friends all across the globe today. My name is Leaf, and as always, welcome back to Sugar Pine Zoo. Yeah, we're so close to the end of it, guys. I can't even believe it. So over here, I'm just starting on the nice bison habitat that we're working on today. And I'm doing a little bit of a trick that I've learned over the past few days, not days, but years and months. Um, so essentially a way to get kind of more accurate slopes going on. Eventually I do kind of just say screw this and it kind of reform it to my own purposes. But I learned from Bro Nation that the incline for the monorail is actually the perfect incline for ADA regulation inclines. So using that on the lowest, you know, angle snap, it gives you the best incline. So that's what I kind of do over there. But speaking more about what we're doing right here, overall, basically what we're doing, I really want to have this nice big open bison habitat along with the pronghorns. And, you know, I think it came out pretty good in the end. So I went in here with no plan at all. Pretty much like all my builds kind of go. And I really wanted to have this nice big open area. But I wasn't sure what to actually put in it. But I was playing around with the water. Um, we'll actually see it in just a little bit. So I'll hold off on that. But for the time being, over here I do a little bit of a planter area just as a way to kind of integrate some more foliage in here as well just to really sell the fact that you know you're still in the wild you're still in the wild so of course you're gonna see a lot more plants a lot more foliage just basically really round out like what's happening over here and i also love how well this kind of platform came out I love using like the uh, plaster pieces as well as the uh, mulch pieces as well just to really make it sell itself as like this kind of plaster planter I don't know what I'm saying anymore you guys can tell I'm just I have JWE on the mind I'm gonna be completely honest I am so freaking hyped for it but over here you can see me kind of add these little planters over here and yeah so I basically say yeah sure that works I guess and then I throw some like trees in there as well, some plants, just to really make it feel a little bit more organic. I do the same thing over here as well, basically line it up pretty well. And yeah, we just throw some mulch down in there. I don't even think I add plants in this one. Uh, big oops on that point for me, but maybe I'll add those in in the next episode, which by the way will be either American Alligator or Polar Bear. I'm not entirely sure just yet because those are the only two other animals that we're missing. I did have this grand idea and I talked about it a little bit before for a big like, you know, South America, Central America section, but unfortunately it didn't take all that well. Uh, I just wanted to end the series as soon as possible because I want you guys to get the file back. I want you guys to pop in here for yourselves and maybe take your own pictures, maybe explore the park for yourselves because something that I really felt, okay, here is where I started to get a little bit funky with the idea. And also this entire area right here kind of gets redone later on. But over here is where I have the idea. Actually, no. Um, I never mind, I guess. So essentially, what was I saying? Yeah, so the whole idea of giving this park to all you guys. I was just in a couple of parks for a video coming out. I believe it should be on Friday, maybe Thursday, maybe Wednesday. I don't really know at this point. Maybe Thursday, yeah. So I've been in a lot of people's parks and i just had such a blast kind of like examining their way of building examining how they make their structures a little bit more realistic than others and just doing stuff kind of in regards to that and i'm like damn it i need to bring some of that into sugar pine so that's exactly what i do in this yeah so definitely with these structures over here i really try and make it feel as supported as possible and i do change out the color of the wood for the arctic wood path it, it looks so much better it just feels a lot darker and it really sells like that big nature vibe happening in there but of course adding a couple more of those viewing canopies all throughout. I do regret not actually putting education in those. I do want to go back, circle back, and do some more um, 
kind of more of lion signs. Uh, by the way, go check those out. I've been using those like crazy. They're probably like number one on the workshop out of how useful they are already. So definitely do check those out. But over here, I had this little bit of an idea. I've noticed that some of my favorite viewing areas in terms of zoos are those elephant and rhino gates. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna integrate some of that action over here in Sugar Pine. Because obviously we don't really have elephants over here, but obviously bison are kind of larger animals. They can take down, uh, they, they can kill you easily. But I really want to integrate a little bit more of net, like open fencing, because glass, we all know how kind of like glass and plexiglass fencing is kind of like. And of course, we all know how like chain mesh is kind of like. Over here, I just want to have like this nice big, big pieces of log separating you. Well, not really log, it'd be more so concrete than anything else, but I really want that to help separate you. And here's where I came through with the water idea. I originally was going to go for like this big open prairie kind of vibe, but in the end of it, I really wanted to do this marshland. I don't know why, but you know, they don't really live in the marshlands. But I feel like it's just the right thing to do in Sugar Pine because we do integrate a bunch of unique sort of locales. We have like the harbor side area over near the seals and sea lions. We have the prairie dogs which have their own thing going on. We have the moose with the river. We have even like a giant mountain for the doll sheep and reindeer. And I thought, you know what? We're gonna do a nice little kind of marshy area for these guys. So that's exactly what I do. And I think it turns out like the bee's knees over there. I love how well it looks. I hope you guys do as well. That's why I'm doing all this. I do this all for you guys. You guys know how it goes. But of course, over here doing a little bit of an implied holding area. Of course, it's always implied with me because I am way too lazy to actually make real holding areas. What do I look like, Zoofluencer? No, 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 no. Um, I'm nowhere near as good as him. But with that being said, here I am working on a little bit more of the building. And at the end of it, it looks like a pretty damn good building. It really does help flesh out the area. And of course, painting down with a little bit of the biome brush over here, just to kind of get the initial look of the habitat done nice and quickly. As well as kind of fleshing out the other things. Like, of course, we need a keeper door and we really need to cover up the rest of the exhibit. So I opt for, you know, the classic leaf way of throwing down a bunch of rocks and then we could work around that later. Maybe we can add some more chain mesh over there later, just kind of like really sell that nothing is gonna get out, even if the pronghorns do somehow learn how to climb hillsides or something. But at the end of the day, I really love how well this one came out. And these manzanita bushes, oh my gosh, these guys are my life saviors over here. They do such a wonderful job at covering up these big open areas as well as the rocks to really make it feel like it's breathing, make it feel like stuff is growing out of there. And they're the perfect bush. If you're looking for a nice big bush, they're perfect for it. If you're looking for tiny, like kind of tiny ground cover, they're also perfect for it. It just all works out so wonderfully. And of course, over here, what good would I be for an American zoo without representing Old Faithful from Yosemite? So I did want to have a little bit of a geyser over here, and I did forget to put education boards over here. That's like the entire reason why I made this over here, but it's a little bit of a water feature, a little bit of a fountain, and I do put the mist emitters around here just to really help sell the vibe a little bit more. I think it comes out pretty good in the end. And of course, making zoos isn't all just about the animals. It's about the theming. It's about like, you know, throwing these small elements down, making it feel like a living, breathing area. Because of course, when you go to zoos, even like Roger Williams, let's take Roger Williams, for example, the Venetian Plaza has no animals in it. What Italian animals could you put in that small plaza? But still, it adds to the theme. It adds to the story. Your Marco Polio, Polio. Wow, I can't believe I just said that. Your Marco Polo going through like you know East Asia, going through the trade route, the spice route, yada yada. But you start off in Italy, and it really helps to sell that vibe. And of course, I'm kind of doing the same thing over here in Sugar Pine, just to a much lesser extent. <laughs> You're not really, you know, visiting Old Faith. Well, you kind of are, I guess. That makes more sense. You're not really going into like a Native American village, yada, yada, yada. You're just 
visiting Old Faithful. This is kind of like the Yosemite area, I guess you could kind of say. Throwing down the hydrilla grass as well to make the water feel like it's growing something. This really isn't the kind of water that, you know, the beavers have where it's more of a tank, as well as the sea lions and seals. No, this is more of a natural occurring water source. And, you know, the zoo may have used it for their purposes. And of course, just adding a lot more stuff in here, be it more enrichment or animal feeders and stuff along those lines, just to really help it feel a lot more like a zoo rather than a nature park, because at the end of the day, we're making a zoo. And of course, adding some more foliage, just to really help the area feel a little bit more breathable and covering up these plaza areas. Gotta thank Kai for the uh, <clears throat> free build mod. Sorry about that. Coffee is still fighting me to this moment. Um, but still adding the statues over here, I really want to have this little bit of a uh, emphasis on bison migration and basically how their populations were driven down to a massive extent, but they made one of the most glorious returns in the animal world. Yada yada, yada yada. I just think of them as funny looking cows at the end of the day. But with that being said, I really do love, I love how well this really starts to look. I really kind of had some parallels with the moose exhibit as well with like all the dead trees. I should probably go back and add some more drain grass. That's my only like regret about this habitat. And of course, I will say later down the line, we will have like sort of a refresher episode where we go back through the entire zoo, add some more stuff. I've been adding more stuff, by the way, just to really help make the areas feel a little bit more lived in. But of course we are on the B-roll. Look at this. Look at these funny cows. Oh my gosh. Couldn't you believe that? But with that being said, I really do appreciate you guys stopping by. Sugar Pine is almost done and I really do appreciate you guys. Like, stay in tune for the series because it's been really fun. Like, I haven't been this happy with the zoo in such a long time. And it's just so good to finally be back in the thick of it and really enjoying what I've been doing. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the footage and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye bye now.